please, yeah. over okay, here. Should yeah, thank you. So, thank you, Arno von Huys. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Three weeks ago, I met Paul von Tome yeah. in Switzerland. Yeah. Now we're here in Magdeburg, <laughs> in Secta, another uh, convention, another event on this big wave of uh, edible insects that you created mm -hmm. also with the report two years ago, Edible Insects. You're a bestseller author, seven million downloads, I yeah, heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a huge um, public awareness of the theme of edible insect. But what did it fundamentally change in our habits until now? Um, well, uh, I'm not sure whether you can say that it happened already, but what, what I want to say is that it seems to be that there is an exponential growth uh, of interest in this topic, um, which uh, well, is demonstrated by the fact that there are numerous startup companies all over the world, uh, either insects as food or insects as feed, uh, but also the scientific interest. I, I looked at, let's say, the number of publications uh, which have been published since 1995, and there also you see an exponential uh, increase in the interest of insects as food and feed. So it's taking off, that's what I would like to say, yeah. Mm -hmm. What are the main obstacles now, in Europe especially, uh, to make from words action? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, the main hurdle, I think, is legislation. Uh, the problem is a little bit that nobody uh, realized when they made the legislation uh, that in the word animals, there are also insects. So when we had the BSE crisis, they said animals are not allowed to be fed to animals. And, well, insects are also animals, but at that time nobody saw, it was 1997, nobody saw it about insects uh, as feed for animals. So we are now with, with that problem. Mm -hmm. There's a little, we were a little trapped in a system that comes from all the days, from exactly. the problem with the BSE. Yeah. But today you heard also uh, Dr. Wolfgang Trunk from the DB Sante. Uh, did you hear something new now from him? Not really. Um, you know, they have allowed now insects um, to be produced as fish feed. Uh, yeah. That was already since 2013. Now, um, what we hope, that is that uh, last week there was a committee of the European Food Safety Authority and they were asked to advise the European Union on how to proceed. And we really hope that they would allow it also, let's say, for poultry and for pigs, because that's a tremendous market. So if that would be allowed, then I think the market will explode, <laughs> uh, more or less, because the companies are geared up. I mean, they can produce tons a day if necessary. FAO is also part of the EFSA, or takes part in the discussions. How big is your um, importance for uh, making it the good regulations about edible insects in Europe? How big is your influence there? Well, I think it's not so much the academia which has an influence. Well, the academia are part of the committee, but I think it's mainly the, the private companies. The private companies are always very secretive, mm -hmm. uh, and you know they don't want to share, let's say, what they are doing with others. But they found each other because okay. of the legislation, because they considered that if the legislation would not be changed, that they are trapped. So they combined and they made the international producers of insects as food and feed with a, uh, an office in Brussels. And they are really a powerful force now. So, You're one of the masterminds of this uh, edible insect wave. Now, uh, in your personal history, biographically, um, could you please explain a little bit how you came into this theme yourself yep. and what has changed in the years that you've doing that? Well, uh, that's interesting, because uh, I'm somebody who controls insects uh, in, in a, let's say, environmental friendly way, so biological control, integrated pest management project. And I was teaching in Niger, uh, in the Sahelian region of Africa, I was teaching uh, students from the Sahel how to control insects on grasshoppers. 
I came back in 1995. That was 82, 85. Um, um, and when I came back, uh, that was in 95. I went again to Niger and I interviewed people about cultural aspect of insects and edible insects is one of them. I went to the plant protection service and they told me, well, the women, they're making more money by collecting grasshoppers from the millet and selling that on the market than by selling the millet. Okay. And I thought, <laughs> how could I have been so stupid that I never had okay. seen that during the three years I was in Niger. But the point is that people in Africa or in developing countries will never talk about the fact that they eat insects because they know Western people consider it primitive oh, yeah, yeah, or yeah. poor man's diet or those kind of things. And that's when my mind, complete, mind completely changed. That I thought, well, it's in fact an excellent habit. You know, we can learn from people in the tropics. So, mm. but, but how was uh, your biographical way from changing from the view of insects as pests to insects as edible? It's edible because this is for Europeans, as you uh, already mentioned, a yeah. uh, big swap, yes? Yeah, in, a in the beginning it was a kind, you know, I gave lectures about eating of insects, but, you know, the more I studied it, the more I saw the environmental benefits, the health benefits, uh, and then uh, we wrote up our first projects, and then gradually I changed from controlling insects to okay. eating insects. So that's the difference, uh, yeah. Actually, what is going on in Wageningen? And you're still professor there, and uh, what are you teaching, and, and who is coming yeah. to your lectures? Well, I, I'm already five years retired. Okay, yeah, <laughs> but, but uh, <laughs> as I see here, you're still very yeah, active. So, in fact, uh, this year I started not to go every day to the laboratory anymore, mm -hmm. but um, I'm still very active in writing articles and in giving lectures all over the world. So that's what I'm doing now. Is there a special topic you're interested in now, or working on it now in Wageningen? Uh, in Wageningen we are still working on insects as feed, but also insects as food. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the things we are looking at is uh, the mineral component, especially zinc and iron, as I explained. For this nutrition. Is, yeah, for nutritional pur purposes. But we don't do that as entomology alone. We do that with other groups who are uh, in human nutrition, for example. One of the points, I was a, bit, a little bit astonished, Dr. Wolfgang Trunk said not one... Um, Entry was made until now to uh, introduce uh, uh, edible insect species on the novel food uh, schedule or apply for for that. So why is that? Is, are you not interested to make something like this from the Netherlands, from Wageningen, from the most important university in that country, to try to push a project into the? To well, at the moment, uh, well, our governments are because Belgium let's say the Netherlands, uh, Switzerland at the moment, but also the UK, they are uh, much more liberal. <laughs> they allow, let's say, insects to be uh, sold in, uh, in the Netherlands. So in the Netherlands we have two supermarket chains, big ones, who have more than 500 outlets all over the country, and they sell, you know, the, the nuggets, the burgers, uh, with insects in them. So for the Netherlands it's not a problem. Uh, but, of course, uh, if you want to get an agreement all over Europe, then if one country objects, you have already a problem. Oh, so yes. this is a, a difficult political problem. I are suppose. you also waiting for the decision of the EFSA now, mid-October, or are you already well, sure we what are, will happen there? <laughs> we are, of course, looking forward to what they recommend. Uh, I have the impression they will recommend favorably, but that is a technical, let's say, a technical recommendation. Yeah. And then, of course, it still has to go politically, which yeah. may be much more difficult. Does the pressure from the people or from the media really help in that uh, topic? Absolutely. I mean, the fact that, uh, that we have our publication, which was downloaded seven million times, the enormous interest of, of uh, the media. Uh, you know, when we published the book, there were hundreds of yeah. television stations all over the world who have taken it. So, uh, yeah, there is a tremendous interest uh, worldwide in the media. Every day there are articles somewhere in the world about edible insects. So, yeah, that's what I mean. It's exponentially growing. Mm -hmm. You have presented an interesting fact for me today in your presentation. You showed the map about 
in which country how many insect species are eaten. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't look at it, this map the way you explained today, because you said, look, Mexico has a lot of species, and the Congo mm -hmm. has a lot of species, and then you explained why. So this is a very interesting fact. Could you come yeah. back to this, please? Yeah, that, uh, well, it, it has more to do with the activity of research than actually how much is eaten. Because what we did, we took only, let's say, the official literature, so what is published. And from that uh, published data, we made, let's say, the map. Uh, but in uh, Mexico, there is one lady, and she published 100 articles at least. Okay. So that's why we have a large number. And the Democratic Republic of Congo, well, that was a Belgian colony. And the Belgian entomologists, they identified lots of caterpillars that were eaten. So it, it is a reflection of the, inter, uh, let's say, of research intensity. So it could be there are hundreds and thousands of uh, species more yeah. if we would go back to oral tradition and not only to printed facts that are available now for us. Yeah, and, uh, well, we are updating the list every okay. year, so uh, every year we have more insects. We had last year 1900, is now 2000, and we have one taxonomist at our group who is uh, keeping the records, so it will certainly go up. One of the things I always hear in conventions like this is we need more research. My, what is your personal view? Is this part of the arrogance of Western uh, um, science industry against all these Eastern big universities that have been researching that for dozens of years already? Yeah, there is uh, lots of research and lots of data uh, available. But if I compare, let's say, the amount of research that goes into insects as food and feed, and you compare that to the research that goes into, let's say, um, uh, in meat, let's say, livestock yeah. uh, products, then it's nothing. Okay. I mean, it's still nothing. So we still need a, model, a lot of research, but it's growing. It's absolutely growing. Who will finance that? Who is financing the Wageningen mm -hmm. University for their research project? I think it's one of the problems here in Europe too that you want to make a research but you have no market partners because there are no um, allowed insects yeah. on the market. Well, it's a matter of uh, grabbing the opportunities and okay. also to be present when, let's say, the calls are made. Uh, but I think it's increasing and uh, even the European Union has sometimes calls in which they say it should be about edible insects. And also national calls uh, can orient, let's say, their calls like that. And I think that's why more and more research is now carried out on edible insects. I think you must be every week in a convention like this. What was a thing that you heard the first time here? Or what was special about... Uh... No, what, what uh, I saw today, that again, what surprised me, that is how many, uh, let's say, how many groups are already active in Germany as well. Uh, a lot of groups which I didn't hear about before. And even, you know, when I came here, I, I tried to figure out, uh, are there any cookbooks in German, you know, about uh, <laughs> insects? And I came across about six. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that uh, things are moving, absolutely moving. One problem is, for, for my view, is that we have only on the list in Belgium, Netherlands, Switzerland, also now with the three species, only insects from the pet shops. Everybody today, that, that was all so uh, yeah. TV, uh, where you just go into with the camera into a zoo, uh, a zoo handlung, you buy some uh, mealworms, you cook them in an Indian shop, and then you give them to the people. Isn't this a problem? This is a problem. It shouldn't be done. Let's say you should only take insects from an insect producer that produces for human consumption. So in the Netherlands we have three companies that... Uh, were producing for pet food, but they set aside special production lines in which there is traceability, track and tracing yeah, system. No, yeah, yeah they, they have hygiene, uh, more hygiene. So they, they have self-imposed protocols to make sure, if something goes wrong, that we can find out why. And um, 
so in the Netherlands, uh, as I said, we have 500 outlets, uh, but that's taken from a company that's specially producing for human consumption. Is there a special label for that? How can a consumer be sure it's under a regulation while regulation is not yet allowed but only tolerated? Yeah, well, if it is a big supermarket shame, you oh, can be you sure can. that it is, uh, that it is uh, okay. Uh, but I would not go to, a, let's say, a, a shop where you can also buy a rod, you know, for angling. Uh, I wouldn't do that. I would really go uh, or buy on the internet. There are also companies that uh, that uh, sell them on the internet and which are reliable. And growing your edible insects yourself in the garden, that's an option? <laughs> option. Uh, not in the garden, but you can do that in your cellar or whatever. Okay. Uh, you, you can uh, have crickets or mealworms. Uh, yeah, it's it's a possibility. Yeah. Well, let's mm. go back to Nigeria. What changed there in the topic of edible insects? Since you have been first, you mm -hmm. seen that uh, they can get a higher price for the for the locusts than for the. Meal. Yeah. Uh, well, I think in those countries as well, it was never supported by national governments. Okay. And we hope that this FAO report uh, will really change this, that they recognize that this, uh, let's say, uh, this source of food is an excellent one, and that they will promote it, like in Thailand. In Thailand, it's nationally promoted. And I also hope that a number of African countries will say, well, what we have done for ages is an excellent way, let's say, of, of eating of our food custom. So let us promote it. That's what I hope. One of the issues on the panel was about social responsibility while uh, producing edible insects. Would it be a good a way to produce or only organic and fair trade uh, insects from developing countries to import? to? Yeah, I think that's another le <laughs> legal hurdle, okay. which, which may be difficult. in. In the well, in the end, I think it would be better if we take them from developing countries because, um, you know, in winter time in in Europe, you need to heat your establishments yeah. because insects are cold-blooded. So you need a facility in which you raise the temperature in winter time, and of course in the tropics it's not necessary. So in the end, uh, let's say in a far future, I would recommend that they come from developing countries. Yeah, that's true. In Switzerland, we can pick them deep frozen from the trees that <laughs> <laughs> in the garden. So thank yeah, you yeah. very much, Arnold. Okay. I would hope to see you next year in Switzerland yeah. at the Sky Food <laughs> Conference. Okay. Um, I yeah. think uh, we, we're starting about 1st of September. You said that there is a conference in China then uh, also. Yes, uh, let's say the, the conference that we had uh, last year in, in the Netherlands, which yeah. was attended by 450 yeah. people from 45 countries. Uh, I, I just received something on, on my okay. email, but I think it will go ahead in China probably September, October next year. Yeah, and that will be again a world conference endorsed by FEO and by our university. Thank you so yeah. much okay. for the interview. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Arnold, okay. for the message. Yep, thank you so much. It will okay. be published in our uh, YouTube channel okay. called Sky Food. That's okay, Sky our name food. for, name for oh, edible okay. insect, okay. like seafood for. Yeah. Fish, which it's a very nice name. Yeah. Insects and very good name. That's yeah. Title. Yes, and I hope, really hope to see you next <laughs> year in Switzerland. First what what is that? Uh, first of September. It's a, it's a Swiss convention about edible insects. Oh, it's the third time now already next year. Okay. It was the second time, third of uh, September now, uh, at the Zurich University of Applied Sciences. What a huge success also with Paul, Paul van Tomo, yeah. like you, yeah. he can really But you know, he is, he is also retired next year. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. he will not <laughs> stay away from the no, animal no, insect, no. I think. So. No, but he is... Uh, no, it would be... It will be uh, the end of the year or in January, I think he retires. Yeah, um, yeah. but it, it's a pity because... Uh, he has been very helpful in... Yeah, and this wave keeps mm. you going, I think. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. But it will go by itself. <laughs> yeah. You know, so that's, that's what a, I remark now. That's, it's, that's it's, a, you know, we, we have been maybe at the start, but now it, it takes off by itself. So okay. that, that's fine. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Have a